Hello, Jamie Ballard here of Cupcakes and Haystacks. Welcome to my passive income life. So if you have been around my channel at all, you know that I like to talk about a lot of different things within my videos. They typically revolve around digital planners. And today I want to share with you a design trick. Now, there are a lot of different ways that you can design your planner covers. In most of mine, or in the past, I have used planner bands here, but I have kind of fallen in love with this button closure, and I want to show you how I create them on my own planner covers. It's actually a lot easier than what you may think. Now, if you haven't already, make sure that you do subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this in the future. And if you find this tutorial to be useful, if you wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up so that I can get my videos out to more people. So I'm gonna come down here. I have duplicated this specific slide and I'm going to show you um, how I create this button closure um, from the ground up. Now this tutorial is going to be within Apple Keynote and that's because Apple Keynote is my preferred software for creating my digital planners. But know that you can take these same techniques and apply them to any software program that you want to use. Whether that is Affinity Publisher, InDesign, PowerPoint, um, you may have to take a few different steps in order to get the same results. Uh, the buttons may be in a few different places, but you should be able to find everything that you need to do what I'm doing right here in any of those programs. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I'm going to grab my shape tool and I'm going to select this rounded rectangle. I'm going to swing it over here and you can see that it's adopted this specific shape style and I promise I will not be keeping this, but we will go ahead and get the size that we need and I'm going to center it. We go and you can see it's hanging off of the edge here. Now what I want to do is I want to change up, um, right now it's this uh, funky floral, um, but I want it to match up with this leather on the binding. And you could just do this with a solid color if you wanted to. Um, you could fill it with a different pattern or um, maybe a fabric texture, whatever matches your digital planner design. But I'm gonna come over here. You wanna make sure that your shape is set to image fill. You can see when you click the arrows, there are a lot of different options, but you'll need image fill if you want to fill it up with a um, pattern or a texture like I'm going to now. I'm going to select choose. And I did not prepare, so have to bear with me while I find the specific pattern that I'm looking for. I should have had it set aside. You guys, I'm so bad about this. I really need to organize all my files. It's awful. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna grab this leather. There we go. And um, I'm probably going to, right now it's set to scale to fill. I'm gonna change it to tile. And I'm going to make this smaller just so that the grain of it matches this a bit more. It doesn't have to be exact, but I think that that looks pretty good. Okay, so you can see right now there's actually already a drop shadow attached to it, but I'm going to perhaps adjust this a little bit. Now, if you just started off with a normal shape, chances are your shadow is turned off. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that off so you can see the difference. I use my drop shadow so much that Keynote just automatically populates them for me. So you can see here that it looks like it is almost, even though it looks different in appearance as far as pattern, it just kind of blends in with um, the pattern of the actual cover. And we want it to look like it's raised up sitting on top. So that's why we add the drop shadow. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna select this arrow again and I'm going to choose a drop shadow. And you do have different options of contact shadow and curved. In my opinion, just the basic drop shadow, you're going to get the best effect with it. And I'm gonna adjust these a little bit. I'm gonna bring the blur up a little. And I'm going to bring the offset up as well. And the offset 
just means that it is going to extend a little bit further from the actual shape. There we go. And I'm going to bring down the opacity a little bit and that just means I'm going to make it so that the shadow isn't quite as dark. And the blur, what that does is the higher the blur, the softer the shadow is going to be. Let's try 70% for this. And there's no exact science. It's really just kind of getting a feel for it and deciding what you prefer the look to be. And then you can see this angle. It's pointing down in the bottom um, left-hand corner, but I want it to be more to the side like that. There we go. So now you can see that it looks like it is raised up on top of um, this flower pattern. All right, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to give this a border because if you are actually looking at a real piece of leather or um, a real notebook, the edges are gonna look just a little bit darker than the rest of, um, of the leather and that's going to give it a more realistic look. So I'm gonna come over here to where it says no border I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose just a basic line. There we go. And I want to make sure that it's a solid line. Here there are a lot of different options, but I want that solid line. And in order for me to get the color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this um, wheel here. And you can see that this um, box pops up. I'm going to grab this dropper tool. and. I am going to hold it right over the leather. This is going to make sure that um, the colors match up. And then I'm going to take this slider and I'm going to slide it so that it is a darker color. So it'll still be in the same color family. It'll be complementary to the leather, but it's still going to stand out a little bit. All right, so I'm going to click away from here. And I think I want that line to be a little bit thicker. There, I think that looks good. If you can see that, it looks just a little bit more finished, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to add stitching, okay? So I'm going to click on this shape, I'm going to copy, and I'm going to paste it. I'm going to sit it right on top, I'm going to come over here to where it says image fill and I'm going to choose no fill. Go. Then what I want to do is I want to come down here to where the line is. I'm going to change this to a dash line. Now you can go really tiny. Um, I'm probably going to select this one that's in the middle though. And I want to change the color so I'm going to again Click on this color wheel. You'll know that it's selected because it'll be um, highlighted. And then I'm going to come over here to this box. I'm going to grab my dropper tool again. I'm going to select this color again, but this time, instead of um, making it darker, I'm going to make it lighter. There we go. All right, now I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to make this smaller. And you can see I am making it so that it's going to hang off of the edge right here because this is, um, we're giving the illusion that it's wrapping around the back of the planner. There we go. And I think I'm going to make this color even lighter. And I think I'm going to change the tone of it a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to bring down the point size. And again, you do not have to follow exactly with what I'm doing here. Um, I'm just going by what I think looks good. There we go. I might make this just a little bit more narrow. And I always make sure that everything is centered. It's going to be just those little steps that are going to make a really big difference within your design. Okay, so there we have the piece um, of leather we have the stitching and now what we want to do is we want to create our button. So I'm going to click on my shapes here and I'm going to grab a circle this time. 
bring that over here. I think I'll make it a little bit bigger. And when you are making your circles and such bigger, if you hold down your shift key while you extend them, it's going to keep that perfect circle shape. All right, that looks like a good size. So now what I want to do is this is set to image fill, but I'm going to change this. I want it to be advanced gradient fill because I want to make this look like it is a real um, brass or metal button. So I'm going to click on that. And you can see that these colors here have automatically changed. But I'm going to switch this up to make it look more like what it will when you first get in. So I can show you the different steps that I take, okay? All right, so the first thing that you need to make sure of is that chances are it is going to automatically be defaulted to this very first square. But this is not going to allow you to create the effect that you want. You do not want the linear gradient. Instead, you're going to want to choose um, the use a radial gradient. There we go. And then you are going to have the ability to swing around your angle. Okay, so it may be that when you first start out, your uh, light color is not going to be at the center. Okay. Um, but we want to move this until it is. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but you'll just kind of eye it. There we go. And then we want to come up with the perfect color. So this would be a really great color if you just wanted like a silver button. But I want to do a brass button. I think that it is going to um, suit my design style a little bit more. So I am going to come over here. I'm going to click on this black square. I'm going to come over here and I have some colors in here that I think is going are going to work. Um, let's see. If you want to do like a rose gold, a gold, or like a brassy color, you're going to want to start with a darker reddish brown. That looks like it might work well. And then I try to never use just a basic white color. I always want it to be a little bit off, um, more like a creamier color. I just think that it looks more real if you can get a slightly different tone in there. So I'm going to click on this and let's grab this here. So you can see it's more of an off white. And if you want to change the amount of lightness in the center, you're going to do it by moving this slider. So I'm going to click away from this for a second. So this lighter shade is going to come from light reflecting off of the metal. So the more of a lightness there is, the brighter the light is shining on it. And then the less light there is, that's, or the less of that whiter color in the center, that is going to be, um, just less light reflection. So I'm going to see if I move this here, it looks like a really bright light is shining on it. And if I bring it down, you can see that it greatly changes. So I'm going to keep it right about here, I think. And you can see it has a definite metallic look to it. And this is as easy as it is to create a specific button. Um, I'm going to show you the settings that I used for the drop shadow of this circle. Um, I have a blur of 11 points. I have an offset of zero. Now I chose an offset because I want to make sure that there is an equal shadow all the way around this button. Okay. And um, the opacity is 91. So I have a pretty high opacity. And the angle doesn't matter because we don't have an offset. If there was an offset, we would need to change the angle, but this is just completely void since there's no offset. 
And that is how I create my button closure. So if you have any questions about this at all, um, do not hesitate to drop a question down within the comments and I will get back with you. If you want to learn how to create these digital planners from scratch, like the cover, the pages, all of that, then you are going to want to check out my, um, my digital planner course, the Extraordinary Digital Planner Design Course, and I will have the links for you down below. But I hope you found this to be useful. If you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.